Welcome to this next video in the playlist on group theory. In this video what we're going to talk about is the subgroup generated by a subset of a group. Okay, we're going to discuss how to construct the smallest subgroup uh, of a group which contains a certain subset of your choosing. Okay, so before we can actually define this, uh, what I need to discuss is a little prerequisite. Okay, and the prerequisite is the understanding that if you intersect together an arbitrary number of subgroups uh, of your group, uh, that you will also end up with a subgroup at the end of it. Okay, because that's going to be really important for us to be able to define the subgroup generated by a subset of a group. Okay, so we're going to be working throughout them with some arbitrary group capital G here. So it doesn't need to be a finite group, it doesn't need to be an abelian group, okay, it's just an arbitrary group capital G. Okay, so the prerequisite piece of knowledge then concerns intersecting together an arbitrary number of subgroups of this group capital G. So what I'm going to have then is a set of subgroups of G, and I will denote this by big curly A. So whenever mathematicians use a curly letter, generally they're using that to denote a set where the elements of the set are actually sets themselves. Okay, so whenever you see a curly letter you should think the elements of this are probably going to be sets themselves, and indeed in this case curly A is going to denote a set where the elements of the set are actually subgroups of the group capital G. Okay, so um, just to make this explicit, uh, here it is, it might contain a uh, subgroup which I might call H here, it might contain another one which I call H bar, etc. Okay, and this doesn't need to necessarily be a finite set of uh, subgroups, it doesn't actually even need to be a countable set of subgroups, it's just an arbitrary set of subgroups, so you have arbitrarily many subgroups in this set here. Okay, so the theorem then that I want to discuss first of all and which we need to be aware of in order to define the subgroup generated by a subset of a group is that if I intersect all of the subgroups that are in this set together, and remember there are arbitrarily many in this set, curly A, then I will end up with something that is actually a subgroup of the group capital G. Okay, and let me just remind you, all of these are subgroups of G. Okay, so H is a subgroup of G, H bar is a subgroup of G, every single one of them is a subgroup of G. Okay, so what I now want to show you is that if we intersect them all together, so if we take the great big intersection of every single subgroup, which I'll denote capital H, where capital H is an element of curly A, so you go through every single subgroup in here and you intersect all of them together, my claim is that the thing that you end up with is actually going to be a subgroup of capital G. And just so that we've got our quick hand name for this, I will call it I for intersection. Okay, so the claim is that I, this intersection, is going to be a subgroup. And note, I'm saying we can intersect an arbitrary number of subgroups of the group capital G together, and we will end up with a subgroup of capital G. Okay, uh, so it's not necessarily a finite number of subgroups now that we're intersecting together here, it's an arbitrary number. Okay, right, so what do we need to prove then in order to prove that this intersection is indeed a subgroup? Well, firstly, we need to show that it's a non-empty subset, and then what we need to do is show that it obeys the axioms of a group with the restricted composition law from the larger group. Okay, so why is it going to be a non-empty subset of the group capital G? Well, this is a simple argument. We know that all of these things that we're intersecting together here are subgroups of the group capital G. Therefore, they are non-empty subsets of G, which all contain a certain element. They're all going to contain the identity element. Every subgroup has to, at the very least, contain the identity element. So when we intersect them all together, one of the elements that we will absolutely always get is the identity element. So, if nothing else, this intersection here is going to contain the identity element, at the very least. It might contain more, of course, it'll be more interesting if it does contain more, but at the very least it has to contain the identity element. So it is going to be a non-empty subset of the group capital G. Okay, so I'll just bound it there. It might be that it just contains the identity element, but uh, it might contain more as well. But it has to contain the identity element, it cannot be the empty set. Okay, so it is a non-empty subset of the group capital 
capital G. So at the moment we know that I is a subset of capital G. Excellent. What I now want to show uh, is that uh, it obeys the axioms of a group in its own right. So I want to show that with the restricted composition law from the larger group capital G restricted down to this subset, it actually obeys the axioms of a group in its own right. Now remember, when we're checking that a subset is a subgroup, we don't need to worry about axiom number two, associativity of group theory, okay, because when you take a subset and put the restricted composition law from the larger group on that, it has to obey associativity no matter what subset you take. You could take any subset you like. If you restrict the composition law down to that subset, it must still obey associativity because if it didn't, it wouldn't obey associativity when it was part of the larger composition law on the larger group. Okay, so we really don't need to worry about associativity, which is very good news because associativity is the really complicated one to actually get if you're building a group. Okay, if you were just creating a set of symbols and trying to make up the composition table for it, uh, you'd have a really hard job getting it to obey associativity unless you actually knew some tricks for ensuring it. Okay, so uh, we don't have to worry about associativity, which is good news, but we do need to check axiom number one, closure, axiom number three, the identity, and axiom number four, uh, inverses. Okay, so this is a very simple exercise. So firstly, we'll do closure. So what we need to show is that if you take two arbitrary elements that are in your subset, so X and Y are just going to be arbitrary elements of your subset that you're trying to check whether it's a subgroup, we need to check that if you compose the two of them together, that that is also an element of the subset, i.e. when you compose two elements of the subset together you don't suddenly end up with some element that's outside of the subset and is in the larger group capital G. Okay, so how can we make sure of this? Well, it's very, very simple. If X and Y are both in the intersection, okay, capital I here, then what does that mean? That means that every single one of them, uh, well, sorry, each of these, X and Y, is in every single one of these subgroups that you are intersecting together. Okay, otherwise they wouldn't end up in the intersection. Remember, the intersection is all of the elements that are in absolutely every single one of these subgroups that you are intersecting together. So if these two elements, X and Y, end up in the intersection, it means they're in absolutely every single one of these subgroups. Subgroups are closed under composition, so in absolutely every single one of these subgroups, X composed with Y must be in there. Okay, therefore, x composed y is going to be in every single subgroup, so when we take the intersection of all of the subgroups, x composed y is going to be ending up in there. Okay, so that's the argument as to why x composed of y will be in the intersection if x and y are in the intersection, because we're intersecting together subgroups here which are closed under multiplication. So I can tick that one off. Axiom number three is easy, we've already argued it. The identity element is going to be in the intersection because every single subgroup that we're intersecting here will contain the identity element. And finally, axiom number four, inverses. So we need to show that if you take an arbitrary element of your intersection here, that its inverse element, x inverse, is also going to be in there. Okay, how can we conclude that? Well, again, we use the fact that this is just an intersection of subgroups. Now, if x is in the intersection, that means x is in every single one of the subgroups that we're intersecting together here. Okay, they're all subgroups, so they have to be closed under inverses, so they'll have to contain x inverse. So every single subgroup here will have to contain x inverse. So when we intersect them all together, the intersection will contain x inverse. So again, a very simple argument. So proving that this set is indeed uh, a subgroup is very, very simple, and we've now indeed done it. So indeed, the intersection of an arbitrary number of subgroups in this set curly A is indeed going to give you another subgroup of the group capital G. Now, it might just be the trivial subgroup. It might be a really boring subgroup, but it will still be a subgroup. Okay, right, so that's an important understanding point, and I felt that we needed to go over that for completeness to this video. Okay, so now we are ready to actually begin the main topic of this video, which is the subgroup generated by a subset of a group. Okay, so we're going to need some subset of the group capital G, and I'm going to use the same letter again, but this time not curly. This is not curly A anymore. This is just A. Okay, so I've not got curly A anymore. This is just A, and A is going to be some subset of our group capital G. 
okay? So A is just some arbitrary subset of the group capital G. Okay, at the moment it's not a subgroup. You can pick whichever subset you like. Just pick a collection of elements from the group capital G. So drawing this on a picture, let's say this is our larger group capital G. So here we are, I'll have the group capital G denoting green here like so, and then we are just picking some arbitrary subsets, so you could pick some splodge like that, okay, nothing of any uh, structure at the moment, okay, it's just, you know, you, you've picked arbitrary elements, pick whichever subset you like, okay, so there's nothing special at the moment about A, it's just an arbitrary subset. So now what we're going to talk about is the smallest subgroup of the group, capital G, that contains this subset A completely, and that is the con uh, concept of the subgroup generated by A in G. So we denote this like so, we take the subset A and then we put curly brackets around this, and this is now going to be a subgroup of G, okay, and it's going to completely contain the subset A. So it's a subgroup of G that completely contains the subset A, and it is the smallest such subgroup of the group capital G that contains the subset A. That's the concept that we're trying to explore here, that we're trying to define, and it is called the subgroup generated by A in G, or the subgroup of G generated by A, whatever you want. Okay, or you could just say the subgroup generated by A, as long as it was apparent which group you are uh, working in. Okay, so how then do we define this? So informally, the way that we define this is we say it's the smallest subgroup of the group capital G that contains this subset A. But we need a rigorous definition of that. How do we rigorously define this? So the more rigorous definition is that it's the subgroup of G that completely contains A such that if you have any other subgroup of G that completely contains A, it must completely contain this subgroup as well. So it's the subgroup of elements which you cannot possibly miss out if you're trying to find a subgroup of G that contains the subset A. Okay, now uh, still you might be a little bit um, not understanding that. Uh, so let me give you now the actual rigorous way that you can construct this. Okay, so what you do then is you construct the set, which we'll now call curly A again, which is going to be the set of all subgroups of G. So it's again going to be a set of subgroups of G, so H is going to be a subgroup of G, and the condition is that this subgroup must contain the subset A. Okay, so you go through all of the subgroups of your group capital G, and you ask does this subgroup contain the set A? Okay, and if it does contain the set A, you stick it into this set curly A. Okay, and you collect together all of the subgroups of G that completely contain the subset curly A. And now what do you think you are going to do, bearing in mind our prerequisite? You're going to intersect all of these together. So what you're going to construct then is the intersection of all of these subgroups. Okay, so you're going to intersect all of the H's that are in curly A together. Okay, and we know that whatever you end up with is now going to be a subgroup of capital G. Okay, I claim that what you will also end up with here is actually going to completely contain the subset A. And the reason is that all of the subgroups that you're intersecting here completely contain A. So when you intersect them all together, the intersection is going to completely contain A. So what you're actually ending up with here is a subgroup of G that completely contains A. Now, does this fit our description of the smallest subgroup of G that contains A? Well, it does. And the reason is that if you take any other subgroup of G that completely contains A, it's now going to contain this intersection because it will have been one of the things that you intersected together to make this. Okay, so in particular, take any subgroup that's in here, okay, this is all the subgroups that completely contain A, that is going to itself contain the intersection, because the intersection has to be completely contained in any of these subgroups, because as I say, it was constricted by saying which elements are in absolutely all of them, okay, so all of its elements have to be in every single one 
of these subgroups here. So truly, it is going to be the smallest subgroup of the group capital G that contains the subset capital A. And if you find me any other subgroup of the group capital G that completely contains A, uh, it will have to, um, it will have to, um, it will have to contain this intersection here. So this intersection is going to be the subgroup generated by A in G. Okay, and one extra thing that I should say, remember we relied on this uh, set curly A being a non-empty set. That was something I stressed previously. Okay, how do I know that this is non-empty? Well, one of the subgroups that's always going to be in this set curly A is the improper subgroup, the subgroup that contains all the elements of the group. Okay, that will always be a subgroup that completely contains the subset A, so that will always be in here. Okay, so you can know that this set of subgroups of G that completely contain the set A is going to be non-empty, and therefore you have got some subgroups to actually intersect when you're doing this process. Okay, so here then is how you can actually construct the subgroup generated by subset A uh, in a group capital G. Okay, right, we'll have a break here, and in the next video what we'll do is have a look at a bit of, of nomenclature relating to this, and then what we'll do uh, is look at another way of actually constructing this, a more useful way of actually constructing this.